Hi, I'm Amory, and I'm here with the Amory's Book Club selection for the month of April, which is Unlikely Animals by Annie Hartnett. In Unlikely Animals, Emma Starling, a young woman, returns from California to her small town in New Hampshire with quite a bit of embarrassment. She doesn't really want to say why she left, but it's suffice to say things did not work out in California for her. She left town with a lot of hopes pinned on her. When she was an infant, a nurse declared that she had healing hands. So growing up in this small town, she was known to be as to literally lay hands on people to either heal them, help them heal quicker. And this seemed to work for a time, however unpredictable it was. But when she got to California, things kind of went a bit haywire, very haywire. And we learn what happened there and why she's returned, even if she doesn't really want to tell everyone in town why that's happened. She's come home to a big mess. So you have a family that's pretty broken at the moment. Clive Starling, Emma's father, is suffering from, a, I have some tea, that's some hot water that's going. I, I, I guess I probably could have not had it going at this moment, but you know what? We're juggling motherhood and all the adulting and all the everything. And you know what? Time is limited. Time is limited. So, so right now, there's, 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 let's just pretend we don't hear that. So Emma's father. Emma's father, Clive Starling, is suffering from a mysterious brain disease and it's causing him to forget, aside from dying from this mysterious disease, it's causing him to forget a lot of things. So he's forgetting to put his pants on, he's going outside and causing a bit of trouble and he's seeing ghosts. He's a brilliant man but he's had to leave his job because he started seeing ghost animals all over the place. Clive really looks up to a naturalist who died a long time ago. He hangs out with this ghost as well. It's like the only person that he hangs out with and people see him speaking to him he leaves you know, he likes for food like a place setting to be left for this ghost friend who died ages ago and also created like a reserve so there's a huge swath of land in town in which animals are allowed to roam free it's close to the public but you do have the mega rich flying in on their helicopters to to go hunting and do other things so it's a big mystery as to what animals actually exist there but again no one is allowed to check it out but again clive follows the advice of, of his ghost friend that everyone feels like is a great indication of, of how fast he's declining, mentally declining. Emma's mother has thrown up her hands. She may or may not be having something going on with Clive's doctor. And Emma's brother has returned home after suffering opioid addiction. And he's recovering right now, but there's a lot of resentment there. But there's also a lot of love. And Emma realizes now just how much her younger brother was paying attention when she thought he was just in the shadows and she was hanging out with her friends. But wait, there's more. Speaking of friends, Emma returned. With all of these things that are happening to her family, she returns to find that her former best friend has disappeared. People have written her off as being dead, probably dying from some kind of overdose or something like that, although people can't be sure that she was using drugs. Another thing that's really important to know is before she and her former best friend broke up essentially and then Emma ended up leaving town. They formed a, a kind of society in which Emma would help people who needed to be healed. And the friend did not have a healing touch, but she's kind of like the brains of the operation, the admin, if you will. And together they were able to form this society, which seemed to be doing great things for some people, if, if anything, offering a lot of hope. But then Emma left town and things didn't go well and their friendship was broken. And she's returned home now to find that her dad is the only person who believes her best friend is alive. There's a lot that's happening in this story, but it all comes together so beautifully. The story does touch on a lot of you know, heavier subjects, death of a parent, drug addiction, the ups and downs of marriage, big ambitions, dashed hopes, the trajectory of one's life, death in general. The story is actually narrated by ghosts in a cemetery who watch and love from a distance and are able to help in their own small way without doing too much, which would lead to them exploding or whatever the mystery is, whenever, whatever, whatever the mystery is for them, their next uh, mode of existence. Family dynamics, especially when it came to sibling relationships, what it is to be there for your family, what it is to be there for your friend, invisibility, who's invisible, who deserves to be found, who deserves to be truly seen. And of course there's a symbolism with the ghosts, the ghost animals, the ghosts of the, the naturalist and the ghosts that live in the cemetery that watch over their loved ones in the town. And one of the very special things about this novel, which I love, is the voice. Laugh out loud, funny, and heartwarming. There is a balance of sadness and humor. Is there such a thing as a cozy sadness? It's sad. Again, heavy topics. 
but it's also very beautiful. I fell in love with the voice, the story, the characters, the children. There are children in the story that Emma ends up teaching for a while because she's you know come home from California. She has no job. She's trying to figure out what she should do. And to get a temporary solution going, she decides to become a substitute teacher for a class who lost their own teacher because she's caught up in a drug raid situation that has become court television, the, the teacher and her husband. And so they're trying to figure out what's happening there. Like I said, there's so much that's happening in this novel, so many pieces, but they all fit together perfectly. You never feel as if one element is overwhelming the other because they are all connected. I so hope that you read and love Unlikely Animals by Annie Hartnett as much as I did and that you join us at the end of April for our IG live chat. Follow along on Instagram with the hashtags read with Amory and Amory's Book Club. Be sure to follow Amory's Book Club on IG at Amory's Book Club and follow my personal account at Amory where we will be having the IG live chat. I will see you soon and until then, happy reading! So if I want some hot water, that, that has to be kind of done right now. So there's time to actually drink the water before doing all the other things that have to be done. No, not have to be done, that I get to do. That's the, that's, the, that's the way we approach life. It's not about like what you have to do. It's what we get to do and what we're blessed to do. Back to the book. <laughs>